One last quick note before we have a go at this question. Um, the key thing that often makes people confused about these things over here, or, or helps, you know, is what people get wrong, um, is which one's negative? Which one's negative? Because B on A, C on A, they have this nice order to them. How do you remember that the sum is minus B on A and the product is C on A? What did we do this morning to create these results, to derive them? What did we do? Hmm. Yeah, we were, we were looking at coefficients. We said, here's a quadratic. Here's the same quadratic from another angle. Let's see what happens if we play with these, right? And that's exactly what we did. And we got these results, OK? But there are other ways to do this, because we actually know for any quadratic what the two roots are. We have a whole formula for this. What's it called? It's called the quadratic formula, right? Now, if the quadratic formula gives us the roots, I'm going to squeeze this in over here then one of the roots should be minus b plus or minus what? Square root of? OK, I'm lazy, so I'm just going to write that. OK, all on 2a. That's one of the roots, isn't it? If that's 1, then the other one must be, oh, sorry, that's one of them. That's because I just want 1, right? The other one must be the plus. Do you agree? So that's this guy over here. Now, these look like a mess to deal with, OK? But if all you're doing is adding and subtracting these, it's actually really nice. Because the relationship between these two, they have a name. Does anyone know what these are called when one's a minus and one's a plus? It starts with a C. You haven't thought about it. These are called conjugates, right? Now, one of the reasons why these guys have a special name, why they're called conjugates, is because when you put them together, they interact in very nice and simple ways. Watch. Let's have a look. You can write this with me because it's that simple, right? Alpha plus beta. Because you're adding these things together, what happens, bless you, to this square root part? What happens? When you add these two things together, they're going to cancel out. This is just like um, solving a set of simultaneous equations by elimination, isn't it? These things are going to eliminate. So all you get left with is minus b on 2a plus minus b on 2a. The, the square root of the discriminants, both gone. They've cancelled each other out. Well, this is clearly, look what happens, right? Well, this is minus b on a. Do you agree? The same thing happens when you do the product. It looks like it's going to be disastrous, but remember, they are conjugates, so we should have some faith that this is going to come out nicely in the wash, right? This is going to be this guy and this guy on the top. What's going to be on the bottom? 4a squared, right? Because it's 2a times 2a. Now, again, this looks terrible, but hold on, they're conjugates. So what happens to these guys? What, what is this? What is this um, a factorization of? This is difference of squares, isn't it? So what's the first thing? What's the first square? It'll be b squared, right? That's, that's the square of this thing here. Then I'm going to take away this squared, yeah? Which is just this on this. Are you, are you with me so far? But you know what the discriminant is, don't you? The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Just watch out, but there's a negative there. So this is actually a double negative. Are you OK with that? You see, I've just, yep. All over 4a squared. Well, this is just cancel city, isn't it? Watch. Cancel, cancel. Cancel. Cancel, and there's your C on A, just like we proved this morning. Okay, So if you ever have trouble remembering which one is which, it actually doesn't even take that much thought. I just wanted to show you it's another way of getting to the same thing. It really, as soon as you get to this line here, when you're like, oh, I'm adding these things, and they're both negative. Well, clearly, that gives you the negative one. Does that make sense? Say that again. Correct. But I want you to know them. Like You shouldn't need to, look at the, you shouldn't need to take that time to look at it for that. OK, last example I wanted to have a go at. I don't think anyone's up to this, are they? No? OK, <laughs> except for Jason. OK, good on him. That's fine. Let's quickly have a go at this so everyone can write this down. This is question 16. So it's buried a little bit toward the end of the exercise, but it's easy enough to do. OK, now in all of these contexts, I've sort of just been assuming, let's just call a root alpha and a root beta. Okay. I don't know anything about them, and so I just sort of define them independently. 
but often you get given information where you know one root is related to the other one. So you don't have to just give them random letters, you can say, I don't need so many pronumerals, I can have them dependent on each other. So for this question I would say, let the roots be alpha and, now instead of saying beta, I know that beta will be double the other one, so I'm just going to call it 2 alpha. Just as equally I could have called it alpha on 2. Yeah? Because one would still be double the other. Why am I avoiding that? Because I don't like fractions. So this is just fine. Okay? Sometimes you can't avoid fractions, but this time I will. So if the roots are alpha and 2 alpha, I can find the sum of roots just like I normally do with minus b on a. Yeah? It's just it's not alpha plus beta, it's alpha plus 2 alpha. So what's this equal to? Minus b on a in this case is negative 6. That's good. So you can see here, I can already work out what alpha is. That's nice, isn't it? 3 alpha equals negative 6. So alpha is equal to... Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I didn't even tell you what the question was. Didn't even tell you what the question was. We just started to launch into this, which is not that bad a strategy. You almost certainly have to do something with these results if they say something like this. Okay. But now you can see, if I go to the next step, here's sum of roots. Product of roots will be alpha times 2 alpha. It's not, it's not beta, is it? What is the number going to be in this case? It's C on A, which in this case is? And as so it happens, the question is asking us to find M. So we get over here 2 alpha squared. So all we need to do is pop this in. And it looks to me like M will be 2 times 4, which is 8. Does that make sense? So just define appropriately, like so, based on whatever information the question supplies to you. We could have said one root is one unit away from the other root. If one root was one unit away from the other root, then you would define them as alpha and alpha plus one. Or just as easily, alpha minus one. They're still going to be one unit apart. What if one root were the reciprocal of the other? You would define them as alpha and so you just define them however the language of the question tells you to, okay?